So let's talk about shape. And that's kind of funny coming from me because my shape sucks. But you can probably learn some stuff. So he did this, which is a very odd move. Very odd. Um, and you did this. And then this. So if you weren't going to try this, why did you play here, right? So it's kind of like... kind of like you he played here you played here right he played here and then you played here right same situation which means move this move right p16 doesn't make any sense oh okay so if you didn't think he'd push that's a different story so it's it's good to push here because so even if you do this this is a pretty cool tsuji that you can learn white can hane on either side uh if black ataris white ataris black lives in the corner and then white captures this in a ladder see how that works gets the ladder if black wants to take the outside, he'll defend, but that leaves white free to take the corner in another ladder. So that is the weakness of the one space jump uh, when a stone is right here. And it's, it's good for white to try to do that. So it, instead, if you wanted to play territorially and just back off, you could have done this. The knight's move much less it's much harder to disconnect right this doesn't even make any sense black can just if he wants territory just do this white has a weakness he has to fix black can like play it that's a little bit slow but the idea is you want a territory a knight's move is fine you can even bump So that's a little bit um, makes white stronger for no reason. But you do get the corner, right? And then you can go to work um, maybe trying to mitigate some of this or just play in this area. So if it, a shoulder hit's kind of giving you a gift of making you stronger. Uh, it naturally, when you get shoulder hit, you want to play a solid move. Um, or, or, no, or, or a nice, you want to respond in that area. So unless it's really at disadvantageous, you don't really want to respond in like a disconnected way because like I said, this push and cut um, caused a lot of problems for you. And then, so I don't know if you saw that um, or not, but then you abandoned it, which mm, was even worse. So now white's corner is even bigger and black doesn't really have anything in compensation because there's a weak point here white can just like fairy jump away like be like la, 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 and just like leave and then if black tries to you know disconnect white can just sack the one stone and just like black doesn't really have any points in that area and white has a giant corner just for a really simple idea um Right, so, and you'll get more, like, you'll understand, like, the sort of instinctual things more, like this move, but we can sort of see how um, playing a move and then that says one thing and then, go, like, deviating from that just made things a lot worse because white just ripped your shape apart. Um, so that was that corner. Let's take the next corner. So my understanding is you want to sacrifice, and then when white plays here, maybe get a ton of cat territory and compensation. Mm. 
that's sort of my understanding of your move here is you're saying you can kill me I just I will make more points than you and we can see if that happens White has actually a pretty good attack um, on this group. White's making points here. White has the entire corner, and there's a weak group on the board uh, that White can harass and potentially make points here too. So I don't. I'm unsure if. So there's 37 points if you played territorially right now. This is 26, just on its own. So white only needs 10 points somewhere to be even again, which white will get by attacking this. Um, but then black can grow. So it, it's just something you'd have to think about. So we see white not take advantage of this, uh, instead try to abuse the shape. There was a weak point there. Right. And this was the other weakness of this shape, right? The ladder doesn't work. Yep. I'm almost wondering if a Tanuki is just better in this situation. Like, there's no version of this where you, you're you okay. <laughs> right? Like, there's zero... There's no version of this where this works out. So, I'm thinking... You get some forcing moves, maybe out of it, and then like do this. Saves the corner. White doesn't make any points in the corner. It gets two, four, six, eight. Like maybe call that. We'll give this eight right now, or maybe just do this right away, and then just let white, because white needs to spend another move to rid to to completely remove the Aji, right? White needs another move. And if you feel like this is big enough, you can always pull it out. No, you can't do it with that. Don't do that. Stupid. Um, you can at least get some forcing moves out of it to try to secure some more points. Or just you know finish this up, and then you've got some points. You took the corner. Your group is alive. Game proceeds semi as usual. You're a little bit behind, but not really. Yeah. The thing about that, though, is, like, this is very... This is a very weak group now. Because uh, this group is strong, and this group is strong. Um, which means these stones toward the middle are really just a thing to... They're just going to get pushed around. What I'm thinking is they're just going to be pushed around, because there's, there's just nowhere for them to go. Um... You can imagine like a white move here, right? Or, right, so like a white move here, black has to go out, can cap. There's just a lot of, and then white can even come back and take this. And so now the corner's dead. This is still kind of under attack. Then maybe white can take another big point here or something. Um, so this group is kind of just going to get pushed around. It won't be an asset to you. It shouldn't be, at least. It should not be an asset. So I would definitely think about sacrificing those stones. Um, and it's hard to think about sacrifices when you're still starting out at the game. You're, you cling very closely to all of your stones, right? But it is something you have to think about. Uh, yeah, so he started the attack. White got points. More attacks. This is exactly what happened. Fighting. Cool. Fighting spirit. Nice. You're almost connected. So close. But now it looks like white has the weak group, which is cool. Which is cool. It takes a long time to learn what to sacrifice and what not. I still don't know yet. So don't feel pressure. Hmm. 
Mm. So right now, you've almost turned the tables on white because this is now a weak group. So what you can't let happen, you cannot let white connect. Because if you do that, weakness is gone. And you can't... Your, only, your groups are only as strong as the weakest group of your opponents. So if both of your groups are weak, neither one's weak. So I would definitely think about a uh, push, keep them disconnected, something like this, force white to jump out again. White can jump, white can jump, poke at some shape, maybe cap. Now you can see your group is out, you're building the bottom, white's still in trouble. White still needs to like try to make shape here somehow and make two eyes. I don't even know how it's going to work yet. Um, you can essentially rescue your group, but the only way you're able to do that is if you kept this white group connected or disconnected. And so this um, is, is sort of allowing white. There's still that cut there. You still have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's still there's still hope, right? Like you can cut here. Yeah, but you can cut here, and after this, white still has to come back for the shape. Black and harass down. Descend. Now white has two weak groups they have to worry about. Every time white tries to help one, it hurts the other. Right? Anything white tries to do now, your one weak group will will just adapt and attack the other weak group of whites. Right? So you definitely had a chance to disconnect. That cut would have been brutal. That cut would have been so brutal. Um... And now your group's out. You're you're even threatening this actually, because this is an Atari on these stones. So white has to take, and then you can just um, connect everything up. So right, so disconnected. It's it's the basics, right? To just the the quintessential basic theme of go. Keep your opponent disconnected. That's what he did to you in the corner. He kept you disconnected. And that's what you needed to do to sort of get your groups back in the game, was to keep him disconnected. Um, so let's see what happened. Ooh, you got the cut. Okay. White's a little bit stronger in this area, so it's a little bit harder for you to attack. Um, hey, you did what? Oh, nice. Look at you. Look at you go. Uh, that's awesome. Seriously. So, okay. Oh, shortage of liberties. Ouch. Okay, so how could this have worked better? Yeah. So this move is interesting because it's a ladder breaker. Yeah, it's tough. And then we see the we see the issues that having white um no problem. Good night. Yeah. And we can sort of see how not playing the cut right away how that sort of posed a problem, right? Because letting white get so strong here 
made that entire scenario, that cut scenario that I said was so awesome like 20 moves ago, a lot more difficult because now white has a place to run to. Um, and black's weaknesses are a lot more apparent because white's stronger now down here. Um, so it didn't help, really, this exchange. It just it just made this attack a lot more difficult. All right, you got that. That's good. Wow. Nice. All right. Um, yeah, no one came back with that. That's so big. That is so big. I love the kill though. The kill is great. Yeah, we see the shape issue here though, right? It worked out for you. Um, yeah, but we see the shape problem here. Again, that push and cut. That keeps popping up in your games. So if we just draw a line and black cuts here, that's not the best. So it kind of had to do that. But yeah, the push and cut's are a little difficult here. So how I would have played this, just uh, some different ideas. I would have, I would have like 101% lived here. If White wants to take the Ko, this is a forcing move. So it looks like black is all connected uh, and happy. He might have to give up some stones here. He might have to give some stones up here, but he gets that entire corner, and now he's bleeding into the sides, which is which is really nice. So I would I would have definitely played the corner move and lived there. Um But I love the kill. I love the double kill. I think that's the coolest thing. Because uh, there's literally no way for white to win it. This <laughs> is no way. Um, it's awesome. It's literally impossible. So that was great. Um, but we see how it weakened 
um, these stones, right? So if we think about kind of what happened in the global situation, um, you captured a bunch, but theoretically he should have captured that. Like this should not be alive right now. And now with this not being alive and this now not being alive, it's unclear who the winner is. It actually feels pretty even. So you, you killed, but you got hurt and you got very lucky. You got really lucky uh, he played there instead of... Um, playing here so let's think about hold on I feel like this can die too what do I feel like this can die too shouldn't probably not now Yeah, it's fine. You're fine. Um, yeah. And we saw how close a game it was, right? Even with your captured corner, we saw that white was only a few points away from winning. So could you imagine what would have happened if he captured all of that? It would have been GG. So that's why I would have thought to, to take that corner first and just live there, you know, let white do whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. You, you just ravaged the side in the corner for him. That's like 35, 40 points. Um, so let's go back to the main ideas. So to, uh, some things to work on. One space jumps are great, but be careful when there's a stone right there because they could ram their head in and then cut on either side. So if that's the only shape thing you remember and take away from this game is uh, to be careful um, in this sort of situation. If the stone was here, right, that's fine. Because it's, it's, not, it's not at the critical weak point. That's why we poke there, right? You see, you see people poke at these shapes. That's why that's a poking point because it's, it's the weakness of the one point jump. Um, so you don't want to play that shape if that stone is already on the board. It's kind of like playing into a pre-poke, right? It's like white got the poke in for free, almost, and you weren't able to respond to it because you didn't have the time. Yep, bull in the china shop. That's exactly what it is. Um, so if that's, if that's the weak, if you can remember the weakness of the one point jump as a shape, uh, that's a great thing to take away from this game. Uh, another great thing to take away from this game uh, is, you know, if, you, if you're if you in a bad situation and you just don't see a great thing you can do for yourself besides making a weak group, it's always good to think about what are some big moves you can play somewhere else. Just like living in the corner, letting white take this as compensation, because if you think about it, do you ever know how it takes so much more work to clean up a room than to make it dirty? So much more work, right? It is so much more work for white to capture these stones without any Aji than it is for, you know, you to make it messy in the first place. So white's going to need so many moves here. And if you think about all the moves that white needs, um, we'll kill that. And we'll kill that. And we'll do this. White doesn't look great anymore, does it? <laughs> white kind of white's position shit the bet, um, because white wasted all of those. So so there's no logical reason white would take advantage of this right now if you did Tanuki. So the game would kind of proceed, and then once it got big enough that okay, this is like big enough to actually save now, then you can do that. Um, but if you try to do something with it now, you're removing the possibility of it ever happening again. Um, and I'm, I'm actually going to make a video lesson about that. I played another teaching game with a DDK, uh, and that, that happened very clearly. So, um, not even, you know, not even a sacrifice, but just, like, play a bigger point, right? Like, that's not, if he's going to spend the moves surrounding that, you're going to get so much benefit elsewhere on the board, it's not even going to be funny. So, 
I think those are a great two things uh, to think about and to take away from this game. On the tactical end, the weakness of the one point jump is that peep, so don't play into it. And from a strategic end, uh, if it's more work for your opponent to take those stones off the board cleanly, um, and you get a bunch of moves elsewhere, at least one or two, that's sometimes enough to warrant a sacrifice. So, that's all I will say about that. Oh no, Tristan, I'm just actually about to sign off because I have to get to bed because I have to wake up early tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sorry. Next time, 8 o'clock. I start promptly at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time next week. So, if you want to check that out, uh, definitely recommend it. Yeah, a uh, really cool game. I hope the review helped. Um, this is fun. I enjoy this. So definitely willing to do this again next week um, to take a break from me running, <laughs> from me losing my game. So it's pretty